first of all, I love that we have to clarify like what universe we're talking about now. Like, oh, even it's gonna be so difficult. Now. Yeah, even at the beginning, I had to be like, you know, this universe, not this one. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be fun over the next ten years. Hello, everyone. Welcome to CBR Saga, CBR's one and only podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Thanos' Gardening Home Service. Do you have pesky weeds or unwanted vermin ruining the efficiency of your garden and driving you mad? Well, just snap your fingers and their expert squad of professionals will handle all your gardening needs. Call 1-800-INEVITABLE today for your free consultation. But enough about corporate sponsorship. Let's get into today's episode. The shadow of Iron Man will loom large across the MCU as we move forward, and there is a real possibility that multiple Iron Men will be introduced in Phase 4 to sort of uh, sort of fill the gap. But just who are these new Iron Men and women? Well, we'll start off today talking about some exciting Riri Williams news, how Peter Parker and Doctor Strange can become Iron Man in an alternate universe, and then wrap it up with perhaps an evil Iron Man in Norman Osborn. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm joined by my co-host, Nick. Nick, how you doing today? Doing quite well. Uh, excited to discuss all these iron people. These iron people, indeed. So I got a question for you to start off, Nick. Sure. Um, overall, is Tony Stark the only one capable of being Iron Man? For so long, those two are, are combined. It's a Tony Stark is Iron Man. Iron Man is Tony Stark. But do you think he's the only one capable of being Iron Man and doing what he does? So in this universe... Yes, like the main one, not not this one, not like the real world outside the uh, movies. Not the not the boring one that we live in. The correct the MCU one, yeah, yeah, the the MCU one. I think yes. Um, in an alternate universe, maybe if if things started different early on, but in this one, there's that scene in in Iron Man two where he's in the courtroom and he basically says like, "I am Iron Man." To hand over Iron Man would be to hand over myself, and then he makes a witty pun, <laughs> but but um <laughs> naturally. But yeah, so ever since that sort of moment, uh, it never struck me right in in like Spider-Man Far From Home when they're like, who's going to be the next Iron Man? I always sort of felt like, you know, Tony's the only one. It's time to be, you can be Iron something, as I'm sure we'll see with, with some characters. Uh, but but Tony's always been Iron Man. And I, I don't think in, in the main universe, you can change that. I think that's a good point. So let's kind of get into this as you, as you, as you kind of mentioned, it's like he's the only one who can be Iron Man, but there are other options. The ones who can morph into like their own version of, you know, the tech based Iron Man esque hero. And that's who I want to start off talking about today. Uh, Riri Williams um, is, is coming. She's, she's yeah. going to star in her own show, Iron Hearts um, on Disney plus one of the exciting new ones coming our way very soon, but some very interesting news kind of broke pretty recently it's the fact that riri williams will first make her appearance in black panther 2 not just she's not just going to have her own show she's going to be introduced in a in a movie first before her uh disney plus show appearance so what do you think of that that decision overall i like that uh, they've done that a lot with characters in the past they did that with black panther and spider-man in, in civil war uh, they did that with the the twins before Age of Ultron. They showed up in, in Winter Soldier. Uh, I like it, though. I'm pretty sure Riri Williams' backstory largely is not tied to Wakanda. So I hope it's not like a big role. Like she's been yeah. living in Wakanda this whole time. And now crazy she's going to help. Right? Like she's, she's yeah. actually Wakandan. Yeah. Uh, so I like it. I, I like that we're going to see her before uh, her show comes out um, and get at least like a tease at who she is b before she has to take on a whole show. Yeah, the more I thought about it, the more I actually liked this sort of news because, like, I think that that could continue the through line, right? So, like, of what Black Panther was trying to do. Like, the end of the first Black Panther ended with, okay, we are going to open up our technology basically to the world because we want to share it with the world and open our borders and and do all that stuff and 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 get our name out there type thing. But then that was kind of sidetracked because Thanos came and 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 uh, you know knocked on our store and ruined that plan. And then we don't know what really how Wakanda was in the last last five years um and or if they were able to continue doing that or not but i think black panther 2 has the ability to continue that through line by making maybe i think you're right like i don't i, I wouldn't like it if she was in wakanda herself but if she was in new york kind of where she's based in in the comics and but she was able to use maybe some more accessible wakandan technology with her genius intellect to create her own type of uh, Iron Man suit. I think I think that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be a cool way to I guess bridge I guess the uh, what's happening in the larger MCU and what her character arc normally is. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, no, I agree, and I think there's ways you can adopt her story to sort of just just fit. Like I said, I don't want her to be a huge part of the movie, but like yeah. 
like a little a little tease. Um, I don't know if I would want to see. I, I think her defining origin moment are, is when her mother and stepfather are killed. Like in the park, that's when she sort of decides I'm going to be a hero. Um, yeah. That's like that's the hero moment. Uh, I don't know if we see that. I think we save that for the for the show. Uh, and we could the the way I pictured it when I heard this news is that Riri um, in in her backstory at one point she like sneaks into MIT to like use their resources to build more iron suits. I think it'd be cool if they sort of swapped out MIT to where she's smart enough to sneak into Wakanda to get a hold of some Wakandan technology. People find out about it and then they decide to make her a hero. And then the show we sort of get a flashback to like that moment in the park when she loses her family. And decides to be a hero. I think that's cool. I actually like that a lot. But the question is, I guess, because Iron Heart is so uh, intricately um, just uh, with Iron Man, right? It's like it's, it's yeah. so tied with Iron Man's story. Like in in she Iron Man is her mentor. Um, I think there's a version where uh, a Tony Stark AI like runs her suit, so that, that's she's yeah. talking to Tony Stark all the time. And I don't think they're going to do that because I think Robert Downey Jr. is done, but right. that would have been cool if, if that would have, if that would have happened. But so I like the whole Wakanda aspect to help her become Iron Man. How do you think that could tie in with Tony Stark? I guess like, cause so, for, for everything, like, so, will he be the inspiration? Like, will he like be like, I like what he did. He's the hero that, yeah. that inspires me to want to do this. Like, is that a way? So I think what happens is uh, in the comics, she like finds an old suit of Tony's mm -hmm. and reverse engineers it. I think so you it, was just, it was just lying out in the street yeah, somewhere. Know. It's just like, you know, he just threw it out in the dumpster out back. Maybe you know? maybe she's going swimming outside Tony's uh, old house and she finds a suit at the bottom of the thing from when it, you know, yeah, when, when it all the when when, yeah. when fake Mandarin blew it up. <laughs> but no, I think I think she could find the suit, re reverse engineer it, sneak into Wakanda to just to steal like technology, maybe some vibranium to make a vibranium suit. Because that's something I always wanted Tony to do that I don't think he ever did was make a Iron Man suit out of vibranium. Um, to do that, then she gets caught, you know. But then she could take on a, a mentor like Pepper or Rhodey in Tony's place to sort of substitute for Tony in this case. So. It, this way, she's still inspired by Tony. She still found Tony's suit. Uh, she still wanted to be a hero like Tony. And now she has a mentor that was very close to Tony in Pepper or Rhodey. And she still follows the backstory. And that's how you tie Wakanda into it. Oh, I like that a lot. That's how I okay. see it. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's 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 our Iron Man replacement number one. Let's kind of move in. So this is our that was our main universe, right? That was like yeah. the, MC, the universe that we know that that we know and love is that one. So let's kind of branch off because Phase Four is all about the multiverse, baby, right? So it's it's, it's yeah. all these different versions. So that's why I think it'd be fun to discuss um, what we might see down the line, which is different versions of Iron Man, but in different universes. And I think the two heroes that could have become Iron Man in their own separate way and been the Iron Man of their universes um, could have been both either Peter Parker or Doctor Strange. Um, I think both of them provide these very interesting differences, but also still kind of retain the heart of what Iron Man, the character could be all about. Um, what do you think of, of, of Peter Parker uh, as a Spider-Man, Iron Man, and a Doctor Strange, Iron Man, I guess, and operating in different universes across the across the multiverse. The question is, who would do better? Oh, okay, oh, interesting. Um, first of all, I love that we have to clarify like what universe we're talking about now. Like, oh, even it's gonna get so difficult. Now. Yeah, even at the beginning, I had to be like, you know, this universe, not this one. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be fun over the next ten years, uh, but. <laughs> I think that's an interesting question you pose. And, and I could see routes where both of them become Iron Man. Peter's is a little more convincing to me, but maybe it's just because I haven't seen the universe where, where Doctor Strange becomes Iron Man. I think a an adult Peter Parker would be a better Iron Man because I think the way they've set up Spider-Man is more, it's closer to Tony Stark than, than Doctor Strange was, which is weird because a lot of people thought Dr. Strange and Tony were too similar. Like they're both these arrogant people who are the best at the thing they do. And they decide with, to become a hero with goatees with, with goatees. Yes. Um, but then you see Tony and Dr. Strange meet in infinity war and you realize like they are kind of very different and they butt heads actually. Uh, Peter is, is much more along the lines of a Tony Stark. He's much more tech based uh, already. I think he understands the world more. Doctor Strange is brilliant. I'm sure if he devoted his life to studying technology as opposed to like neurosurgery, he could get to that level too. So in my head, it's just easier to picture Peter Parker as Iron Man. 
in a in a different universe. I think I think so too. I just think the, the message of what Peter Parker would want to fight for and his track. Like if there was no Iron Man in the world, right? And it was just Peter Parker, the brilliant Peter Parker, kind of having these spider powers. And there was a choice, as the Watcher would say, a single choice. You know, is is like out there. And his choice would be like instead of making a fabric suit, let's make it like a met like a tech suit. I'm a genius. He's like I'm I'm pretty smart. I can make a tech based Spidey suit that 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 yeah. that would do that would do pretty well. And and I think Peter could use his smarts to be very successful uh, in the world overall. But there's something about a Doctor Strange Iron Man that just is really fascinating to me. Just about, like just just the idea of of a Doctor Strange who who could both somehow combine the the okay. magical aspect with something more tech based. Like maybe this is a situation where in his accident where where his hands are just or horribly just ruined and he goes on his quest. Like maybe the accident's worse, right? Like maybe his whole body is just kind of out of it. So it's like, he can still, so he can't really move. He can't really function well because his body is just broken. So that forces him to, yes, learn all the magic stuff that to have all these magical type of powers that he's able to have, but also he needs something more physical in order to, to, to keep his body. Okay. Functioning yeah. well. And that's why I think a really cool, um, blend of the machine, uh, where he can have some tech based powers and use that sort of, analytical straightforward arrogant mind paired with the mystical because that, that's something we don't really see we either see kind like of a, a machine-based man or a magic-based person it's like i want to see what happens when you combine the two um in order to create something really awesome yeah i like that um i i like to think about universes where howard stark survived mm -hmm. um like the first episode of What If really got me thinking about this because uh, Howard Stark showed us that he would not be the one to enter the suit. So I think about a world where Howard lived and I think he still creates the suit. Maybe even even he still has Tony as a child and they bond quickly before Howard's passing uh, and they create the iron suit together. But Howard doesn't want his son to be out there and be doing these dangerous things in the suit. So I think about a world where the two of them create the Iron Man suit, but then they need to find someone to be the pilot. Uh, I see them picking someone like Rhodey, uh, maybe someone like Peter. They mentor from a young age and he grows up to be Iron Man. And I definitely think, I mean, he was on Hydra's watch list. Uh, I'm sure they would look at Stephen Strange and be like, this is a brilliant dude. Uh, and now he's just got in this accident. I like the accident you're pitching that it's worse. Um, so they're sort of offering him a way back to the life he once had. So yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, I think that I think that's really cool because I think a lot of what Tony's arc and Howard to an extent, but a lot of Tony's arc was like, am I am, am I the good in the suit or am I good outside the suit? Right. That's what some of like some of his movies were kind of operating under. Like they wanted to get yeah. him outside of the suit doing stuff to prove that he was a hero himself and he wasn't just a suit. And like this is a way to sort of do that, right? Because it shows like his his if he could still do the same exact thing and be just the genius, even as as Ned would say, the man from the chair, so to speak, but just like mm -hmm. he doesn't need to be in the battle because he uses that suit to to save someone else's life in terms of a doctor. I don't know if I it's like Peter Parker like grooming him from the young age and then just like, yeah, now you're gonna be here. Maybe that could work in a, in an extent, just like yeah. you need to it could be like a Batman and Robin type of parallel where, where it's like, Oh, Peter yeah. maybe loses uncle Ben and just like, okay, I'm going to mentor you and, and help you train your anger, even though that's a, that's a weird route to take Peter Parker. But I think it could work. <laughs> uh, I think that that'd be very interesting with, with Dr. Strange in terms of, I didn't, I didn't think about that in my idea of making like a, like Dr. Strange Iron Man, but also Tony Stark is still around. Um, yeah. Um, but I think yeah, that's that really cool. Actually. I think that actually works. I think that, that definitely works, works really better well. for, for strange than it does for Peter. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So those are like, so, who, so if they had to fight each other though, like a Dr. Strange Iron Man and, oh. a, and a Peter Parker Iron Man. If you're telling me Dr. Strange is using magic also easily, easily Dr. Strange, no contest. Uh, but Peter's suit might have, no, you're right. The magic web, aspect. Web of things. Yeah. The, the web well, thing. She can't, great. you can't beat the webs. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dr. Strange. Strange Iron Man will teleport him to the sun or something like really yes, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, they need to use those sling rings way more often. They're very <laughs> effective. Like they, they can, so they can effective. solve so many problems. Yeah. Anyway, oh, Thanos just... is here. Sorry. Or it's like, oh, we need to get the gauntlet off of you. I'm just going to use the sling ring to cut off a hand like I did earlier in the movie it, to somebody. Especially in Ragnarok when he shows that that he can like throw the portals like he throws them at Thor and Loki. 
<laughs> yeah, you just wanted to get Iron Man out of the picture. To, to, to send him to the sun. <laughs> yeah, he's out of Good the luck. picture. <laughs> Inevitable. This guy and throw him <laughs> off into the sun. Exactly. Okay, it's our it's our Infinity War Doctor Strange fan fan fiction <laughs> that we have there. Um. So I guess I guess this kind of leads into the idea of villains talking about Thanos. Um. In terms of because now we've talked about all the good Iron Men that kind of can come from uh in this universe now i want to talk about the future where maybe we could see an evil iron man um which is something i think they could do with the character of norman osborne i think norman osborne is a fascinating character he's on his way we all know that he's he's going to uh he's going to appear sooner probably rather than later but the question is how do they want to approach the character do they want to kind of maybe rehash the sort of green goblin as bass backstory that we that we've seen before a few times or do they want to try to do something new with the character and make him his more as of right now his iron patriot character which um in this universe that we're creating could be the more of the evil tony stark a genius billionaire maybe playboy not philanthropist uh you know makes an iron suit for himself and and does it in slightly evil ways and i think i think that's interesting to me an idea of an evil tony stark to show what could have happened if Tony Stark was was maybe more sinister, could be very fascinating. Would have been very fascinating. I think that's something they should do in the future. What do you think? Evil Tony Stark, Norman Osborn, Iron Patriot, and Goblin. What do you what do you think? A lot I of definitely, options. I definitely want to see like an evil Tony Stark in the sense that the public views him as the new Tony Stark, but behind the scenes he's really nefarious and Ooh, probably laughing sinister, to himself. Maybe yeah. Does this with his fingers a lot. Twirls his uh, mustache that <laughs> correct, might yeah. Have, yeah. <laughs> um I don't so, so I've pitched this before. If they're going to do that with Norman Osborn, I think they need to bring him bring him in, bring him in from an alternate universe. He needs to have already had his villain run, and now he's in a new universe where no one knows who he is. No one knows that he was a villain in the past. Uh because if if we're gonna get Norman Osborne, even though we've seen it before, I want to see the green goblin, Norman Osborn, unless we've already seen it with the same character. So what I, what basically what I'm pitching is Willem Dafoe comes in from the Raimi verse. He was the green goblin, uh, before he, he, you know, passed on in, in in the first Spider-Man, he comes over and he says, okay, uh, new game. Let's, let's start. Let's, (laughs) Hey everyone. Uh, (laughs) he does what Quentin Beck did, but like was lying about, he comes in and says, I was such a hero in that other place. You guys, you should trust me. I'm a, I'm a good person. I promise. (laughs) Um, then I would like to see him become this sort of evil Tony Stark where he takes over the technology. He wears the suit, he leads teams, but at the end of the day, he's still a bad guy. I love all of that. I think I think Norman Osborn, especially Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn, who who comes from uh from the alternate universe where he did all that stuff before, it would be a lot of fun because I think that continues a more continues the through line. I like when things continue the through line from from yeah. past things. So and I think that's an interesting way to bring about the character and could definitely wreak havoc uh across across our universe. Uh, Mike, my last question for you is just uh, if with this Iron Patriot Norman Osborn is. Would you have him as a villain for Spider-Man or would you have him as a villain for Riri Williams? Oh, that's good. Um, I would have him as a villain for like the Iron Team. Um, so Riri Williams, Rhodey, and um, Pepper as, as rescue. So I, I think he'd make a great villain of Armor Wars. Yeah. Or at least an, an anti-hero of Armor Wars, maybe a direct competitor to now Riri Williams, because obviously Rhodey and, and Pepper don't have the intellect that Tony had. So yeah. that's where Riri sort of comes in as now the smartest person. So that sort of team of, you know, Rhodey, oh, that that trio, I really want to see that trio, Rhodey, Rhodey Pepper, and Riri. Yeah. I think they all complement each other like perfectly. And that would be the best place for Norman Osborn to sort of become a villain. And that's such a great idea of that. That's what best carries on the legacy of Iron Man, right? So like overall, it's, it's like he inspires a team of Iron Man to get together, like the Iron Man team. And you have so many different aspects. You have the intellect, you have the, the strategic war mind, and you have maybe the heart and compassion of, and, and just, you know, just general awesomeness of Pepper Potts all together into like into one team forming into carrying on Iron Man's legacy to be a hero. I'm sold. I want that yeah. one. That one, that's Same. the one I choose. Who, who do we write to about that? I want, I want to choose that one. 
Okay, so that about wraps up today's episode. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for, for watching, for, for liking the video, for subscribing. Go ahead and leave a comment telling us what your preferred version of Iron Man is in Phase 4. And uh, we'll be back next time for another exciting CBR Saga episode. Thank you all very much, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. Stay Iron Man-y. Mm, I think about it once, but it's good.